See, 8,000 RPM, you can, you'll catch up to anybody. Alright guys, now we're inside my 2005 Acura NSX. Let's take it for a quick spirited drive. This is my first drive with it. Just taking it out of the warehouse now in uh, April. Everything's warmed up. Everything's up to temperature. Don't worry. This is my favorite car. So I've had over 100 cars. At least 100 cars with manual transmissions. And if I had to narrow down my collection of cars down to one car, it would be this. So it's got a really good ride. I mean, the suspension is perfect. So this is before uh, automatic rep matching. So every rep match you hear in this car is actually me doing it. This is before sport buttons and electronic suspensions. Now, the one thing this car has will surprise you is it's got electric steering. So even I forget, even I've said, I think in a couple of my videos, when I come out of a modern, say, one of my modern Porsches with electric steering go in this car, I go, oh, thank God, hydraulic steering. It's not, <laughs> this is electric steering, which Acura mastered in 2005. And my S2000 has electric steering as well. And if you drive a modern car in electric steering, then come back to this, you'll see how good of a job they actually did with this electric steering. So now this is a NA2 car, which has the bigger 3.2 liter engine instead of the three liter. And you have uh, 290 horsepower instead of 270. So instead of having a zero 60 time of about 5.7 seconds, you have a zero, forget my radar, you have a zero to 60 time of about five seconds flat. So it is significantly faster. And it's not really that 20 extra horsepower that you can make up probably with an exhaust and headers. What makes it quicker is it's a six speed, so that's shorter gearing. And honestly, on the highway, since I had a NA1 NSX before this, I always forget that I have a sixth gear and I'm always driving in fifth gear. But this does, this does have a six speed gearbox. Now an automatic was still available, but if you got the automatic, then you had the smaller three liter engine of the NE1. And the automatic is uh, horrible. I've driven one, don't, don't buy one that's automatic. Very easy to heel toe downshift and all the rev matching you hear here is me. <laughs> now the brakes at the time were very good. The brakes now compared to a modern, even steel brakes on a 911 or a Cayman or a Boxer, they are nowhere near those brakes. I'll equate it more to like an M3 brakes. Like if you really wanted to track these cars, the brakes would fade. I've driven this car spiritedly, not on the track, and the brakes have been fine. However, my NA1 car, my 95 NSX, that's 10 years older than this, the brakes used to fade if I drove it hard on a spirited drive. Now, I believe the NA2 cars do have bigger brakes. I forget. But this is my favorite car to drive because it's quick enough to get you in trouble. You're so low to the ground that it feels a lot faster than it is, like an S2000. And this is, you know, a second and a half faster to 60 than an S2000. So it is significantly different. You can't be like 6'5 in here because the seat doesn't go, even though it's a sports car and the driving position is very low compared to an M3, which starts life as a three series. See, 8,000 RPM, you can, you'll catch up to anybody. So even though the driving position is low, it's not really made for tall people. Maybe again, this car came out originally, this is in 05, the last year, but it came out in 1991, so it was actually designed in the mid to late 80s. And maybe people were shorter back there because like you can see I'm six feet tall with this hat on for the GoPro. I only have about an inch of headroom and I have the seat kind of raked back. So you can't move your seat down but you could rake it back, the headrest, or you can move the seat up. So typically I move the seat up, even though I have long legs to reach the clutch, and then I kind of rake it down to fit my head. So if you're 6'5", try 
before you just uh, drive it because it may not work for you. Now, Matt Farrer also just bought a 2005 NSX and I've met him, he's 6'3", so he fits. So I guess if you're 6'3", you fit. Maybe my legs are long for my six foot height, I don't know. And I love analog gauges. So one of my favorite things about this car is the 8,000 RPM tachometer. It's on the left side where it should be. It goes clockwise the way it should and it's analog. Now, even though you're low to the ground, your significant other will like this car because the suspension is is smooth, uh, is soft. It's not a tough suspension. So there is, even though it's got less body roll from cars of its time, like my S2000 is an 04, so they're only a year apart. The S2000 has a lot more body roll. This car at the time, they're like, oh, it's got no body roll, but it's not like a newer car with an electronic suspension, like say like my Panamera Turbo with a Porsche dynamic chassis control that literally has zero body roll, but it's electronic. So there is a little bit roll here, but you probably wouldn't, wouldn't know it unless you've driven a modern car. But I could drive this car all day. Not that you care, but it also gets great gas mileage. You can easily probably get 35 on the highway. And I think I average, even driving it spiritedly like this, I think I still average like 25 or 26 miles per gallon. Uh oh, KA. Okay, eh? And remember, there's no. There's traction control, but no stability stability control. Unlike my S2000, which doesn't have either. That's a Rolls Royce, right, or no? Yeah. Was that a drop head coupe, I think they call it? And this car is reliable. We'll do a, uh, like I said, we'll do an eight year ownership review. We'll go over what I paid for it what it costs to insure, what it costs to maintain, how reliable it is, what it's worth now, and all those other factors. Today's kind of like just my first drive. I haven't really driven this car since October, and it's uh, middle of April right now when I'm filming this. So I just kind of wanted to give you an overview and a cockpit view of what it's like to drive this car on uh, some spirited back roads. All right, so what we're gonna do is we'll make a left here, we'll go up the road, we'll do a quick highway pull or two, and then uh, we'll probably end the video. So maybe, ah, oh, Tesla, I'm gonna go in front of you. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, we got more NSX videos to come. I should've let that guy go, but I didn't want to uh, be behind him. In my experience, the Teslas go very fast in a straight line, but go very slow in the turns. Just like most people drive. This car certainly is nowhere near the speed of that car in a straight line. That car's probably in the high threes, zero to 60. But, it's way more fun in the turns. Now I wanna go on the highway here but I think Waze is telling me there's two cops there. So maybe we're not gonna do a highway pull just yet. Ah, we could see, it doesn't mean we have to go fast, right? Up, oh, we're ready to get in radar. Ah, let's do it. A lot of people drive fast on the highway here, so this area, is heavily patrolled. Well, let's see what we can do here. I don't see anybody. All right, and with the radar going off, we'll end it here. Have a great week, everybody. I'll see you next Monday at 7 a.m. Eastern. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.